Hope you're enjoying this prayer series. We're pretty deep into it right now, and I'm hoping that you're benefiting from your small group. Today, I wanna talk about a practice that I have been using when it comes to prayer for the last 31 years, and it's all about journaling. When I first started, I didn't even think I, I could do this. I'd never written in a diary. I'd never really kept my thoughts down on paper. And I said to my mentor, you suggest this, but I struggled doing this. And he said to me, he said, if you can do this consistently for 60 days, it will become a habit. And he was right. I practiced it for 60 days without missing a day. And I was able to turn it into a discipline. And I use it regularly every time I pray. When people say, well, I don't know if I can use a journal, and I have people kind of push back saying they've tried, but they've failed. What I often say to them, I think the reason you struggle is you just don't know what to write. And so I follow a structure on a regular basis, and it helps me to understand what I want to write, and it keeps me kind of on track. For me, when I do my journal on in a day, sometimes I can write four or five pages as I use these major headings. So I'm gonna kind of share with you today just what I do that helps me to stay focused, but to get the most of this journaling time that I use along with prayer. First thing I write is yesterday. I, I look at yesterday and I think, where was God and where was he at work in my life? Where did I have some victories where in the past I've had defeats? Where did I make some choices that I'm not too happy with? Where, where did I go wrong? What did I do right? Um, I talk about the blessings that God has given me and, I, and yesterday I, I talk about gratitude. And once I'm finished that, I kind of draw a line in my journal and the next thing I do as I kind of begin my prayer time with God is I remind myself of the enormity of God's love I express this back to God in worship and adoration, but it is so important that we start there to remind us how much God loves us. And I write often the same things in my journal time after time. God loves me with an everlasting love, a never ending love, a love that cannot be separated by anything that I do, a love that was demonstrated on the cross. That's the enormity of the love of God, a love that accepts me, a love that does not uh, punish me, but disciplines only out of love. And I remind myself of the love of God. That's the first place I start. And then when I'm finished writing that, I move to uh, a word I write, confession. And this is where I share with God some of the things that in the previous day, I'm not too happy about those choices that I make. You know, the word confession really means to agree with God. And so often I write, God, I agree. This is not what I should do. This is not how you would want me to live. And so I just write this down. And the good thing about writing it down and looking at this is I can see the progress that God is making in those areas. Because sometimes it's weeks that I kind of write the same thing because I'm working through an issue or a challenge and I can see the progress. I know I'm making progress. Sometimes it's very small. And so I write all of that. And at the end of that, I just write one verse, 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess, we can be forgiven by a God who chooses to forgive. The next thing that I do is I write the word surrender. And I take all of the things that are kind of weighing in my mind and on my heart, and I write them down. They could be things with my family, it can be things uh, about here at Lakeside. Recently I've been, you know, writing surrender when it comes to the financial side of things and with some other challenges that we face. But I take all of those challenges and I write them down. And I then at the end just write this phrase, God, I hand these over to you today. And it makes such a difference to be able in that prayer to hand these things over to God. Sometimes I have to do the same one for weeks on end. God doesn't mind. He wants to hear from me because we're in a relationship. And that's what our pr my prayer time is all about. And then when I'm finished um, looking at this area of surrender, um, I, I, I consciously pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. I pray what I believe is the oldest prayer of the church. Come Holy Spirit. I pray for the Holy, Spirit's, uh, to, to, the Holy Spirit to fill me, to anoint me, to equip me for ministry, to provide uh, leading and guiding, to protect me from the work of the evil one. And I, I, I spend time and I hold my hands open and I just say, come Holy Spirit. 
and I just wait for Him to, to, to I feel that sense of His presence because I can't do life without that power. So I need to remind myself of the power of God through His Holy Spirit that is available. That's what prayer is all about. When we're able to surrender and when we're able to call on the power of the Holy Spirit and we're able to know that God loves us and, and that we are forgiven, it builds a greater degree of trust, but even more important than that, it builds in me hope. That's what I want from prayer, as I want to find that hope to do this day. And then I take a word, I write the word gratitude, and what are the things that I'm grateful for? Um, some of them for yesterday, some of them are just general things. I often pray for uh, gratitude of my salvation, um, the work of the Holy Spirit in my life, uh, pray for my fa or gratitude for my family, my spiritual gifts, all of those kind of things. When I'm finished that, then I finally get to the request. Now, because I have so many requests and I don't want to write them over and over, I have a second journal. It's called my prayer request. And I have it categorized by different things and a bunch of Lakesiders, their names are in there. And what I do is I write them and then if they're answered, I cross them out and I put a date so that I can see God at work and know that He is working uh, in, these li in the lives of these people and in my life through prayer. And then basically, I just any then I do one last thing. And at the end of it all, I'd say, God, is there anything that you want to say to me today? And then I sit in stillness just for a few moments. And if God sort of prompts my spirit and my mind, I write that down. I have a little bit of a grid that I work this through, but I write that down and begin to say, is this truly God speaking or is it my own voice? Because I've heard both and confused them sometimes. And so that's my process. And that's where the journal uh, works for me. Right now, I have a bo couple of boxes in cupboards in my office, and there are 50, 60, 70 journals because I've been doing this for so long. I just find it's a way to keep me on track as well. Because sometimes when I pray, my mind wanders. But when I journal, it keeps me focused on God. So if that's a challenge you have that your mind sometimes wanders, maybe journaling is one of those practices that will help you keep you focused on God, His love, His power, His hope, his um, goodness and his grace. So maybe you want to try journaling. Just get a spiral notebook. That's all I use. Just write, begin writing out whatever uh, uh, format or structure you want and see if God does not really work in your life because you're more intentional in prayer, but you're also very attentional through prayer. So I hope this helps and maybe you'll uh, give this a try.